Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer. And we are talking about the week between the 12th and the 19th of August 2017. So what do we have this week? Of course we have the powerful Mercury retrograde in Virgo. What is that all about? We're going to talk a little bit about it because we talked enough about it in previous videos. But on the 12th, Mercury is turning retrograde. It's doing so conjunct Vista, the goddess of the sacred fire, the things that we hold dear in our life, the fire we need to kindle in order to stay true to ourselves and our destiny. So when Mercury is in Virgo, in its ruling sign, it's powerful. When it's going retrograde in its ruling sign, we feel it str more strongly. A lot of people have been asking me, how come Mercury is not retrograde yet and we feel the malfunctions in communications and timetables and so on and such already? Well, first of all, the higher octave of Mercury is already in retrograde. Uranus is in retrograde and we can feel that. And we have to remember that each planet has a speed. When the planet is in sufficient speed, everything concerning this planet is working properly. But when a planet slows down and actually stops, <laughs> that's when we feel the frustration with the subjects concerning the authority of that planet. And when Mercury, in charge of timetables, navigation, uh, um, everything that is uh, regarding um, commuting, our thoughts, our information, the spread of information and communication, is, is getting slower and slower until it's turning retrograde. That's when we feel the frustration the most. And again, when it's in retrograde and going slower and slower until it finally stands still and goes direct again, that's when we feel it the most. Okay, so Mercury is going to be retrograding for the next three weeks. Uh, hang in there. Uh, besides that, on the 12th, we have the Moon in Aries in a cardinal a male emotional Aries conjunct the goddess Aries and Uranus and squaring Pluto. That's a volatile day. The 12th and the 13th are days that we should really lower down our volume and take a chill pill. <laughs> take the chill pill. Anyway, so really turn down the volume and make sure you're not creating havoc over nothing because this is a very dramatic time. And what's happening in the sky right now is that we have this square between Pluto and Jupiter. And into that mix, you know, that square between Pluto and Jupiter, we've talked about it already. It makes us confront our ego and our darker side and really bring everything from the dark, from our, our beasts, from down under within us into the light. And so evolve and grow. You know, Jupiter is, is consciousness while, while Pluto is unconsciousness. So we're bringing up from the unconscious thing to the things to themes to the conscious that actually make us change, make us evolve. But if we're not conscious enough, we could be stuck and hung on power trips and ego trips at this time. And when we throw Venus, the planet of love, relationships, satisfaction, and money into the mix, creating a T-square, we can see that A, we need to be less extravagant, we need to be more modest, we need to be not as um, grandiose as we can be with relationships, love, and money, and regarding the satisfaction we seek in our lives. Because this could be a turbulent time, opposing Venus, opposing Pluto. This could be a time of great change within the Venusian subjects of love, relationship, satisfaction, and money. So we need to be careful and we need to be responsible. And change could be positive. I mean, the transmutation could be a great one if we're um, acting gently enough and wisely enough and kindly enough and lovingly enough. We can get to know ourselves better and our spouse better, our friends better, our business partners better because we're talking about every kind of relationship. Of course, sorry, plan. Of course, uh, uh, our primary relationship in the first place, but every kind of relationship is subject to great change. If there are things that need to be brought up to the surface and talked about and discussed, they will be uh, approached. I mean, Pluto bring those, br brings those subjects up. We cannot ignore them any longer. And if we try to, that just brings rage to the table and that could bring 
a disconnect or an apocalypse to what to uh, uh, a, um, a relationship that wasn't um, that didn't have the right kind of communication that you couldn't discuss everything that you couldn't work things out philosophically ideologically uh, in, in an ideological matter you know and just work things out so when we have this T square prudence and calculated uh, um, steps forward are what is advised in our relationships and regarding money matters because the change can be positive or negative and we need to make sure we're not making the wrong steps or we're not acting before thinking of what would happen uh, just a day or two from now and how are we going to deal with the consequences of the drama that we are creating and fueling at the moment so on the 13th mercury is going to uh, you know mercury all through these days you know uh, going into retrograde for the past week or so and it's still there for for uh, uh, for a while it's going to dissipate during the next week but we can still feel it it's opposing neptune uh, this is a time that we can feel more lethargic and confused uh, that we can get or, or do mistakes more easily so if we do need to make important decisions regarding our lives and the navigation of that life forward mercury retrograde is not the time to stop doing it it's just that we need to understand that the state of mercury right now makes us not as clear and sharp as we would want to be and we need to really pay attention to the small details and the fine print and then we can go on and do everything this is a great time to speak with the muses to go for things that are more um, spiritual or artistic on the 14th oh one more thing we're, we're through this week we're gonna feel um, we already feel the sun trining Saturn, which is a great time to um, plan ahead things concerning our career and these kinds of endeavors. And through this week, towards the end of the week, towards the 18th and the 19th, we're going to feel much more strongly Mars trining the sun. And that's a productive time. That's a time that we could meet our goals. That's a time that we could actually have some achievements. So that's a good thing. We could feel like our energy is being spent in a wiser, more efficient way. On the 14th, the moon is in Taurus, very sensual moon, a great day to enjoy the company of others or food or drink or aesthetics, beauty, good music, but it squares Mars. So we have a short fuse, short temper. We can get embroiled in... Uh, struggles and conflicts that we really don't need to so be careful not to on the 15th venus is uh, exact with the opposition to pluto so up to the 15th just be aware of that pluto venus opposition we've talked about the t-square with jupiter on the 17th we have the moon in gemini Opposing Saturn squaring Chiron, this is a day to um, stop the feed of information from coming in, to just have some peace and quiet, to not be critical with yourself or others, and really, um, if you can, disconnect a little, go out to nature alone, or just be alone a little bit, be with yourself and tune in instead of uh, listening out all the time this would be a great day to do so because we can get overloaded through this day and really uh, that can exhaust us. And on the 19th, we have the moon in Cancer conjunct Venus. This is a great day to be with your family, with your loved ones, with people you feel intimate with and belong to and just enjoy uh, those small, beautiful, sweet things that we have in our own four quarters. And we're waiting for that total Clips of the Sun on August 21st that's going to be on Trump's uh, natal Mars and Horizon and, and uh, Regulus and of course Benjamin Netanyahu's and the State of Israel's as well. So 
we'll have to live and see we could have a lot of revelations through this week and in the coming days disclosures that change the way we see um, governance in Israel and the states and the people that need to be standing on top of that pyramid I hate the fact that it's still a pyramid I mean we have to understand that it is time to move forward into something more communal and that we could take a bigger part in the making and the decisions concerning our own future our communal future so thank you for listening have a beautiful week and for any questions private lessons courses or consultations you're more than welcome to uh, contact me and if you do so you, if you do so I have also a US number just remember I'm on Jerusalem time so mind the time difference thank you for listening this is Boaz Feiler signing out goodbye